Science rules. It's your girl, Miss B E E E E E E E. What's happening, Falcons? I'm back again. Remember that date I went on with that guy who took me like on a hot air balloon in the atmosphere and stuff? Well, it was a disaster, okay? I will never go on a date with him again. That's number one. Number two, I am on a dating app and I found this new guy that wants to take me on a trip, right? So, let me tell you how this went. You think this is gonna be a good story? It's not, okay? It's not, it was also a disaster. First, we started off in the trope sphere, y'all. First of all, it was like raining so hard the day he picked me up to take me to the airport. Like, the rain was out of freaking control, y'all. Like, we know all weather occurs in the trope sphere, and it was like every type of weather was occurring that day. So that's number one. I knew the date wasn't gonna go well, but you know, I tried to have a little bit of faith I tried to have a little bit of faith in him that he would make it a little bit better for me. Then, so we're like getting on the jet. The jet is like shaking uncontrollably, right? While we're taking off on the on the landing strip, right? And we get into the stratosphere, dude. We literally get into the stratosphere and I see these like weird lights. Like, I know like the ozone layer is up there and it's like, you know, affecting, climate change is affecting the ozone layer a little bit. But I don't know why I start seeing these little blinking lights. First of all, I thought I was in the twilight zone. All right, so creepy. We're going up a little bit higher, right? I kid you not. I kid you not. I saw a meteor like fly across the across the plane in the mesosphere. Can you believe this? It like literally flashed before my eyes along with my life. <laughs> Okay, because I thought we were going to die. A meteor literally came shooting past our plane. I just wanted to go to Aruba. That's all I wanted to do. I could, I don't, I don't know what else I could do about that. Then, I didn't even know we could go up this high in a plane. But by this point, you know, I want to push my little seat ejector and like fly out of this thing, right? We get to the thermosphere. It gets extremely hot. I have sweat beads forming around my eyeballs, okay? Like, it's really crazy how hot it got up there. I literally had to say, dude, like, first impressions are like a must, and this is a horrible impression, so I'm gonna have to go. So I literally was strapped in my seat, I pushed the seat eject button, and I flew out of that plane so fast. I didn't even wait to get to the exosphere because you know, the air is so thin up there, and like, I couldn't, breathe if I went to the exosphere. I'm not in a space shuttle. Like that's where spaceships and the International Space Station flies. Like how would I even make it up there alive? He didn't even think to get me an air helmet or something, you know? Miss B-E-E-E-E -E 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 is done with dating these weird guys. Like, you're not even helping me. Bye guys. Welcome back to Storytime with Miss Linda Rains. Today we're going to talk about clouds up in the sky. So the clouds up in the sky, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a British pharmacist and chemist. This is a type of scientist. And his name was Luke Howard. And what little old Luke Howard did is he developed a classification, that means a way to name them, a classification system for the clouds that you will see high up in the sky. So according to his system that Miss, Mr. Howard came up with, according to him, he named his system based off of their appearance, based off of how high they are up in the sky, and based on whether or not they're going to precipitate. Now remember guys, precipitation means rain, snow, sleet, or hail, right? So those are all types of precipitation. So Mr. Howard, what he did is he named 
name these different types of clouds using their root word. So that's the part of the word that's at the very beginning. So I like to imagine him going outside, looking up in the sky and just thinking, man, what does that cloud look like and how high is it? And, and does it rain when that cloud comes around? So um, Mr. Howard looked up and and he decided the cumulus cloud was going to be named cumulus because cumulo, that start of the word, it is the Latin root for heap. And a heap is like very big, right? Like a heap of something. So those cumulus clouds are big, beautiful heaps that we see. Now, Heap can also mean that they are very tall and round on top. So that's how he named our cumulus cloud. Now, another type of cloud that he named was our cirrus cloud. So now he named the cirrus cloud because cirro, the Latin root for cirro, means curl. That's right, I said curl. So the cirrus cloud is wispy and it curls up. And they're usually very high, 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 high up in our atmosphere at the tip and top of the troposphere. And so they usually are formed of ice crystals because it's so cold the higher you go in that troposphere. So that cloud was named because it's nice high up and it curls nice and beautiful just like that root Latin word, zero, which means to curl. The next part that he named for clouds is alto, right? And alto, just like whenever you go to chorus in class and you're singing, right? And alto, and alto is nice and high because that's what the word alto means. So our cirrus clouds are up nice and high. The next thing we're gonna talk about is our nimbus cloud because the prefix, right? Remember the start of that word, nimbo. Nimbus means to rain. So anytime you have a cumulonimbus cloud or a strato or a nimbo stratus cloud, they're going to bring you rain. So just know if nimbo is in that cloud name, it is going to rain. So this Mr. This Mr. Uh, Luke Howard, he just laid out on a blanket and he looked up in the sky and he named our clouds and we are just so thankful for that. This has been Story Time with Miss Linda Rains. I hope to see you tomorrow. Guys, Rhonda Review here again with my assistant. Today we're going to show you how to create a wind vane. So you're going to need a cup, a thumbtack, a pencil, a straw, and you're going to have to get a little cut at the end of each. You cut a piece of paper into like, I forgot what this is called for a second. This Rhonda Review just had a little mind fart. Parallelogram. We'll call it that for now. And a triangle. Take your straw. On the ends that are cut, you're gonna take your triangle, put it on one end. I guess I didn't cut it all the way through, so we're gonna make another one. Cut it that way. Same direction, along the same direction. So now you have the first part of your wind vane. A hole in the top, and you're gonna make the hole a little bit bigger. Take your pencil, put it in the hole. Okay, guys, we're gonna take our Sharpie, you're gonna put an N. One side, north. On the opposite side, you put an S. So south, north, 
east. Never eat. Ah! It's Never ass. eat soggy waffles. I love waffles. So you got an N E S W North. You take your arrow, take your thumbtack, poke a hole through, and then put it in your eraser. Miss Moore. Yes. You know what you call a saltwater duck? Hmm. No, what? A saltine quacker. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Miss Moore. Where does a mermaid sleep? I don't know. Where does she sleep? In a water bed. <laughs> Science Crew. Science Rule.